Are you ready to unlock the full-time travel lifestyle and embrace your calling? Join us as we dive into an empowering conversation with Heather Markell, where she shares her insights and experiences on how to make your travel dreams a reality. So if you're ready to take the leap, then tune in and get ready to unleash your full potential and discover a life beyond limits on this episode of Coffee with Tea. So please, stick around and enjoy the show. And welcome to another episode of Coffee with Tea. I am your host, Tanya Tyler, and I'm excited because I'm going to be talking to Miss Heather Markell, and she is a full-time travel coach. I was like, I love her job already, but with more, before we get into that, I want to turn over to Miss Heather and welcome you to the show, my friend. Thank you for having for me. Thank on. you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's, I always want to give people, like our audience, a little bit of the background about how I met you. And I want to say I, I've been networking with amazing people. And I want to give a quick shout out to Dr. Chris Belfry. He connected us and um, he thought we would be a great connect. And I, I have to say, I love your story. So when you told me what you do, I was like, oh, you have got to be a guest. So without further ado, Miss Heather, I'd like to turn it over to you. Please tell a little bit about who you are and, you know, how did this gig of yours become a, a reality? You know, yep. full-time travel is amazing. So yes. welcome, to, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. So um, today I am a full-time travel coach and also going into my sixth year of full-time travel. So I've been to 33 countries uh, on six continents since I quit my job in 2017. Uh, before all this, you know, I was, I worked 25 plus years in corporate uh, and I was in sales, marketing, customer service in the telecom industry. And at the beginning, I loved my career because I was traveling everywhere. I was using my language skills um, and then mergers, acquisitions, and boom, I end up in a domestic company where my language skills are no longer of value and I can't seem to move up. I'm going, I can make lateral moves, but I can't go up. And the more I am in the company, the more I'm not sure I want to go up because, <laughs> um, and so I'm wondering like, what am I doing here? And I, and I started feeling like I was sort of rotting at my desk, waiting for retirement with, you know, one body ailment, another I'm sitting all the time, um, I'm wasting away whatever skill set I was born with. Like it just, it just seemed like a giant waste. And so for about the last 10 years of my career, I thought, you know, I got to do something else. I'm going to quit. And it, and I, you know, in January, I said I would quit December. I hadn't quit. I started, uh, I got certified as a personal, a uh, professional coach, um, in 2008, and I began my coaching business, which at the time um, I did expat coaching and then went into business coaching. And I started out earning myself in my business coaching over my corporate salary. So I'm like, well, that's weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> and eventually I, you know, I just, I looked in all of these different directions to find satisfaction and I ended up just overworking. You know, I, I had my day job and my after day job <laughs> and I burnt out and I eventually felt a pain in my chest in January of 2017. And I knew from a prior experience that uh, emotional pain becomes a physical ailment and I didn't want to turn that chest pain into something worse. So that was the year I finally said, this is my year I'm quitting. And I uh, spent the year stepping up to the plate. I gave myself some challenges. I went through with them, finally quit. And in January, 2018, um, began uh, my travels in Costa Rica. And at the time I really thought I was going for three to six months. I was just gonna clear my head 
and then come back to real life and get another job. And then about six months in when my apartment was, uh, which I had kept, was due for lease renewal, I thought, why am I going back to real life? Like, I, I'm really enjoying myself. <laughs> Um, and, and it's a heck of a lot cheaper than I thought that I understood. So, um, so I ended up not renewing the lease, put stuff in storage, then thinking it was for a year, which is why I put stuff in storage. And again, now I'm going into year six and, um, and along the way I realized as, you know, I got marooned in New Zealand for the pandemic and I feel really lucky about that, but, um, I realized everyone else was waking up to the same thoughts I was wanting more meaning, wanting more purpose. And here I was like with, I've done it like, and I can teach this. So that's when I started building actually some of the programs that I offer now and planning out actually what is now my full-time travel coaching business. Right. I, I like said, I, I was fascinated with your story and, and you, you've already grabbed a couple of gems, but I want to like take a little deeper um, look at some of the things yeah. that you brought up. And first of all, I want to clarify, can you clarify when you talk about full-time travel coach, you're not talking about riding around cross country in those little minivans, right? Well, some people do that. I go, I travel internationally, but there are plenty of people that get an RV and travel domestically in their own country. So you can do full-time travel any way you want. But you, you, you don't do, that's not when you talk that's about what I do. No. Okay. That's why no. I want to clarify. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Yeah, so I'm you can travel. In- I, yeah, I'm staying in like um, hostels, hotels, uh, Airbnbs uh, with friends. I do house sitting. I do a blend of things. Hey there, do you love podcasts? If so, you're in the right place. By subscribing to our podcast for only $1.99 a month, you'll gain access to engaging and thought-provoking content while at the same time showing your support and appreciation. With regular episodes that cover a wide range of topics, you're sure to find something that interests you. Plus, subscribing is quick and easy. Just hit that subscribe button now and never miss an episode. Join our community of podcast lovers and get ready to be entertained, informed, and inspired. Thanks for listening. Okay. Yeah. So I want, I mean, I, you know, there's a lot of things and I want to, you know, people have different views of what full-time travel coach may be. I just wanted to clarify what that might look for you. Yep. Okay. So, you know, when you, you're talked about, um, you know, first of all, it's like your awareness of your body, right? You, you talked about the, the, the pain in your body was indicating that there's needed to be a change. What would you advise somebody who's thinking about um, maybe travel? You know, they've had a love for travel, but they're afraid to take that step. What would what would be something like you would say? This is a a sign for you to start thinking. You need to seriously look at what you, you what you want to do. Is there yeah, something no. that would be a red flag to them, or say an indication that this might be for you? So it's a great question. And actually, um, with my clients, mindset is the first place that I start because this is so important. And I think um, I will say full-time travel is not for someone who's running away. (laughs) It is for someone who's running towards. And I say that because the, especially for me, the first year of travel was full of like epiphanies and confronting myself. You can't run away from yourself. You just can't. And life will conspire to give you the exact same circumstances with different people until you learn whatever lesson it is, or you're willing to go in and see what your role is in creating these circumstances so you can recreate them. So I would say if you're feeling, uh, if you're if you're feeling like I hate where I am and I just want to get away and this sounds, you know, maybe not. But if you are feeling like I'm pulled, I'm called to travel, I want to do it more, but I'm afraid of how would I afford it? How would my future look? Am I going to be bankrupt in retirement if I do that? Those kind. If you're just having concerns, then I would say um, every concern that every question, like whenever I had anxiety about doing this, I realized one day all of my anxieties are just questions I don't have the answer to. Oh, so, I know that. You know, make questions out of your fears, and then you can actually answer them. Right. I love that. It's like, okay, so you're getting curious about 
you know, what your future might look like or, or something like that. And like I said, don't run away from your life. <laughs> You're actually running towards your life because this is something that you feel called, compelled to do. So is this yes. what I'm hearing? Yes, exactly. And so with that being said, it's like when you t- started to take the steps to say, you know, we've heard these quiet quitting and all that stuff. What were your steps or were you, you know, your plan, your planning? Because it sounds like it took you about a year to actually to get the full nerve to, to go. Yeah. So what 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 would your um, advice be, your second advice be to those who are already saying, my mindset is ready to go. I'm ready to step out. What would be your tips to planning this uh uh, planning your ex, I guess exit strategy. Exit, you yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it was funny because um, I, for, for me, I ended up, like I said, I stepped up to a couple of challenges. The third and final one was telling my mother, which was honestly the the hardest <laughs> of all. And um, for, I got her drunk, and it went really well um, until the after she sobered up, and then. And then I got like weeks of reasons I shouldn't quit, but by that time I was ready. And so every thing she threw at me, I was like, oh, thanks. Yep. I had that fear too, but nope, I'm good. You know? So I'd say really your exit strategy is um, if you really are ready and you've confronted your fears, uh, figure out who you want to be and how you want to be remembered. And, you know, I, I think not burning bridges is a great thing. So, you know, talk to your manager, um, tell them what you want to do and, you know, say like how I'm willing to stay and and make sure that there's a good transition. So if you need me more than two weeks, that would be nice, right. To offer, like, if you need me to be here for a month or something, um, I'm happy to do that. I want to make sure that the business, you know, succeeds, but I need to step out. Um, so because you never know, right? You might decide, oh, well, maybe at full-time travel isn't as much fun or I'm done, who knows? And then you want your job back. So why not create the circumstances where you have a great leaving um, that that also paves the way for you to be in connection and then come back if you wanted to or get referrals. You might one day wanna get another job and your old boss and colleagues could be a great pool of people to refer you. Right. I love it. Uh, again, I want to remind everybody that Heather has been dropping some gems. So if you've been picking them up, please give us a, a like, you know, follow up with some comments down below, because we're going to start diving a little bit more into, you know, how do you know if this is, um, like I said, a calling or just something that's like on a whim? You know, how did you know that full-time travel was for you? How did you know that? I didn't, actually. So um, I remember I set out thinking it was for three or six months at first. And so I can tell you from experience what, what happened to me is the two week mark, the end of that is very crucial. As someone coming from corporate, I always took one or two week vacations. So when I got to the end of two weeks, that's when it hit me. Oh my God, I'm not going back to work. What am I doing with myself? And also it was the moment where um, everything came together and almost fell apart, fell apart in that, um, I had pre-planned because when you're on vacation, you got to pre-plan everything. I had all the buses, all the hotels, all the activities pre-booked. And I stopped myself at that two week mark before I left. Cause I said, wait, I'm supposed to experience go with the flow travel. How am I doing that? If, if I book everything, well, Everything worked out. So I was in Corcovado National Park in the middle of nowhere um, at the end of two weeks. And it was my last night of pre-booked accommodation. The Wi-Fi was awful. The manager of the property was even worse. And it took me like hours of research to figure out that I couldn't go where I wanted to. I was trying to meet up with some people and I wasn't going to be able to do it. I had a meltdown and I decided if I can't figure out how to reach these two friends, I can't do this. And I actually thought about giving up, packing my bags, going back to New York and asking for my job back until the wisdom, the wise voice in my head was like, Heather, instead of trying so hard to get where you can't, why don't you just figure out where you can go? And I was like, oh my God, (laughs) so wise. And then once I had that epiphany, it changed the game and I was all in. That's when I knew full-time travel was for me. Um, And just the, the reconnection with the ability like I did as a teenager living with a host family in France to discover a culture, to live in a place, to meet locals, to not be obsessed with going to the tourist sites and instead getting to just 
see the landscape, be bored, sit in a cafe, watch people go by. Like that's to me, the excitement of traveling full time. And I was just hooked. Are you tired of simply dreaming about success? It's time to take action. Join our community of driven entrepreneurs and business owners who are ready to turn their aspirations into a reality. We're more than just talk. We're a collective of like-minded individuals committed to supporting each other's growth and success. Expand your circle of influence and knowledge by joining our dynamic meetup group. Remember, lifetime learners become leaders. It's time to commit to action and join us today. The link to join is located in the description box. Thank you. Right. I love it. Like I said, it's, I mean, it sounds like you're, like I said, you're breaking away from the mindset of what you think was traditional living yep. and you're creating the living that you've always wanted to, to create and, 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 and discover what that means for you. Is that, is that yes. what I'm hearing? Yes, that's right. And so when people are like looking at what was the biggest, I guess, your biggest um, lesson or the thing you want people to take away when they're thinking about making uh, the transition to traveling full time? What, what's something that you've learned that you think people would love to learn or maybe you wish you had known before you started? Well, one thing is it is radically less expensive to travel full time than to live a fixed life in one place. And just that knowledge, I wish I knew that years before because then I wouldn't have stewed for so long in fear about not having enough money. Um, that's number one. And number two, um, if your heart calls you to do this, whether it be the full-time travel or something else, but especially travel, do it. I can't tell you, like, I put it off for a long time. I finally did it. The pandemic happens. And I'm thinking at that point, I may never be able to travel again. I don't know. Thank God I quit when I did because I might not have ever had that chance. Um, over the summer, ironically, I was planning to go to Turkey. Um, I ended up not getting there. And now we know there's there was a huge earthquake. So really, when you want to do something, I'm reminded all the time, go for it, just do it. Because <laughs> you just don't know. Um, none of us knows, especially with travel, and especially with the world as it is today, what things are going to be like. Prices have gone up. Um, the world is a different place. And it, it's going to continuously evolve. There's climate change. Go for it. <laughs> do right. it. Because... Because I get, I have 80,000 photos in my phone. So when I am down, I get to look back and be reminded of having the courage to follow my heart and try whatever happens like that, that I get to keep. And I think that's worth infinitely more than a million dollars that I might've left on the table because I left my job. Right. Yeah. Well, it's amazing. And I, and I don't, I think we sort of hit it to it when I asked you on the last book. What's the one thing you want people to take away from your your interview today that there's nothing else that they hear from you? What's one thing you want to leave them with? Um, I think, again, it's it's just if you have a calling, listen to it. If you have a pain in your body, listen. What's the emotion behind it? Challenge it. Step into it. And yes, like that, that you have the permission to actually live the life that you want. You don't have to get stuck in this life that someone else, or I don't know, we have these ideas, I don't know who told us we had to live this way. You can live life your way. That's what I would say would be a takeaway that I would want your audience to have. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. And and where there's a, uh, where can people find more information about you, your services, or how they can um, find your services to, to learn more about um, your coaching yeah, sure. So um, the easiest is probably to, to go to from desk to destiny dot com, um, which will take you to a page on my site where um, you can book a free uh, full time travel chat call with me. And you can also access um, my blog and uh, other information on my website, my programs. Um, and yeah, I would love to chat to you if you are someone listening that's like, yes, I want to do this, but I don't know where to get started or how to afford it. Um, book a call with me. It's free and we can make it happen. Oh, I love it. And Miss Miss Heather, where do you know where you're going to next? Or would you like to give us a sneak peek as to where you're well, heading next? <laughs> um, 
<laughs> uh, so I, yeah, I'm like in the middle of booking it and I was like all set to go to Bali in Indonesia and then um, using my airline miles and there was like a little hiccup. So I may end up just going to like Mexico or Belize. So it's between those two. Um, and I will be likely in Africa later this year and also Europe. <laughs> Well, I uh, definitely want to say wish you the best and safe of travels and stuff like that. Please stay connected. We'd love to have a follow up. Maybe maybe we can would you be willing to come back and have a deeper conversation? Yes, anytime. I'd love it. Thank you so much. And I want to thank you so much for your time and your in, your um your insight sharing it with us. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. A great, great conversation. And like I said, I love her story. I, I'm like living through her, whether she knows it or not, but I'm, <laughs> I'm living my dream through you. And I want to remind everybody that, yes, we make sure that uh, feedback is always welcome, that links that Heather mentioned will be posted down in the description box below. So please make sure you check out those gems down, down there below. If you enjoyed what Heather shared today, if you want to continue getting more of the great insight that she shared, hit the like button and that subscribe button while you're over there. So please make sure you get those notifications. And again, <laughs> make sure you stay, take things in stride, go with the flow and create your own path. And we will see you back here on another episode of Coffee with Tea. All right, bye-bye.